Hey, my name is Matt McCool with Motion VFX, and we're gonna try something a little bit different in this video. We're actually going to recreate the Ant-Man and the Wasp title. So as you can tell, this is gonna be kind of a long video. There's a lot packed into this, and if you're unfamiliar with Fusion, this might be a little bit overwhelming, but I hope that you have fun and learn something new. We also included a couple of the assets that we're gonna be using in this comp. You can download them in the description below, along with the fonts that we're using if you wanna follow along. But with all that out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and jump into Fusion and have some fun. Okay, so I have uh, basically a blank Fusion comp in here, and I've already imported some of the media that we're gonna be using. Again, you can download all of this in the description below, along with the fonts that I'll be using. Lens flares are kind of tricky to make from scratch without plugins inside Fusion, so we went ahead and made a pre-rendered lens flare just for this tutorial. Um, and then I went ahead and filmed several of these light leaks and uh, we also have an HDR image for some of the reflection materials. And I also have the original in here to reference and kind of compare along the way. So before I get started, I want to come up here to Fusion Settings and under Frame Format, I just want to make sure this is set to 16-bit float per channel. I think 32-bit is probably overkill for this and I don't want to go too low because you might get some banding and other artifacts. Okay, so let's kind of scroll down here in this empty area and let's go ahead and start with the 3D text. So we're gonna grab a text 3D node and let's view it up here. Okay, and then I'm just gonna type in our title and then let's leave a little bit of space between the two words because we're gonna add and the right here. And I'm using this font called Carantina. Uh, I'm gonna use the regular variant of it. This isn't exactly like the original, but it is pretty close. Okay, so I'm gonna lower the vertical anchor to try to center this a little bit better. And we need to build kind of the uh, honeycomb material that you see in the original. Now in the shading tab, we do have the option to select image and that will give us this new image input. We could build kind of like a 2D image and run it through there, but that's probably not gonna get us the result that we're after. So instead of doing it this way, I'm just going to add a replace material after our text and we're pretty much just going to build our own custom material for this. So let's go ahead and bring in a cook torrents which is just a material node. Um, there's a few different kinds of material nodes but this one kind of has the controls that we're after. Um, that's kind of why it has all these inputs because there's different things for specularity, uh, you know, the color, things like that. So to build the honeycomb texture, I'm just gonna grab a background node and actually let's view this and I'm gonna set this to vertical and we're just gonna kind of create this black and white gradient. And this doesn't really matter, we just need something for a mosaic blur to catch. So I'm gonna add a mosaic blur and set the cell type to hexagon. You can see now we've got this kind of cool honeycomb texture. Okay, so then after this, we need to add a bump map and then I'm gonna grab this using my right click and then feed it into the cook torrents and then I get this context menu and I just wanna select bump map material. So let's go ahead and view our replace material again. And we don't see anything yet, but if we come up here and change this to shadows, then we can sorta kinda see a faint little honeycomb texture on our text. Now to make this more exaggerated, we could increase the height scale in the bump map and also change the filter size to five. And the proportion of these shapes is kind of skewed, and also our dash doesn't really have the same honeycomb. So to fix that, we can go into the text 3D node, and I'm gonna change the mapping level from character to word. Now, even though we're not using this material, this setting right here does actually impact the way the replace material works. So we're gonna set it to that, and that does fix the dash here, but now our letters beyond the left side and actually over here, um, they're just kind of getting horizontal lines. So if we go into the bump map, we can change the wrap mode to wrap and that will just, you know, basically duplicate the texture. And at this point, I think I need to probably increase the frequency. I just want to kind of find a good value where it looks like there's a seamless wrap. And I think to make this a little bit more exaggerated, I'm gonna add a edge detect after the mosaic blur and let's reduce the edge width a bit like that. So that's pretty much our texture. Let's go ahead and create the bevel around the text. So 
We could come in here and just extrude it, but the bevel will also get that texture, which we don't want. And so instead of doing it this way, I'm going to actually create an instance of this text. So I'm going to copy and then click away and hit Control Shift V, which will paste an instance, which means it will follow the parameters from the main text unless we specify otherwise. So let's go ahead and de instance the extrusion depth and uh, let's increase that. We can't see it right now because it's not a part of our scene. So let's go ahead and merge this together and let's look at the merge. And you can see whenever I extrude this, it comes out from the back. So if I come over to the transform tab and de-instance the Z, I can slide this back or I can also right click and add an expression. So I'm just going to type in negative extrusion depth minus 0 0.001. Okay, so now whenever we extrude, the Z translation will automatically offset for us. All right, and I'm going to switch the extrusion style to custom and delete the back face right here. And let's go ahead and select this and hit F to smooth this out. And let's create sort of like a curved edge. I guess we should also increase the bevel width. Maybe we'll lower it too. And let's also increase the tracking a little bit. All right, so now we've got something kind of like this. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is add some lights. Now, rather than setting up these lights, from scratch. I'm just going to copy my lighting setup from when the first time I made this because, you know, it's kind of a repetitive process. But let me walk you through what I did. So I have three spotlights. I've placed one down here below, one larger one up top, and then another one behind. And then I have these two additional point lights hanging out right above left and right. I think all of these are set to quadratic so that they have kind of a realistic uh, light fall off. And that's just going to help us create these specular highlights on our text and it's kind of hard to tell what we're doing so let's go ahead and add a render node and connect our merge into the render node and let's bring in a second viewer and i'm going to put the render node in our second viewer and i'm going to use the opengl render and turn on lights and let's move this down a bit here so uh, let's add a camera and position this back a little bit here Maybe we can use a wider focal length, something like 24. Okay, I'm just going to keep pushing this back. And we can also use our reference. Let's go to a different frame. And I'm just going to try to position this, you know, about where it looks like it is in the original. So, and right now we're looking at just linear color. Um, so what we're going to do is actually turn on our viewer let. And I'm going to output this to Rec 709 display because I am working on a Rec. 709 screen right now. Now the 3D viewer obviously looks very different. So we could also turn on the buffer LUT, which is basically the 3D uh, viewer LUT. So just come in here and right click, go down to global options, buffer LUT, gamut view LUT, and then right click one more time, edit, and change this to Rec. 709 as well. And it does this with the background. I don't really like that, so I'm going to right click and change the background color to black. And now we should have the same colors in our 3D and our 2D environment. So obviously this looks really bad. <laughs> so let's go up here and adjust our material settings on our text. So I'm going to add another replace material after the instance. And I want to feed a reflect node directly into the replace material. And this is where we're going to use the HDR image. So I'm going to copy this and paste it down here. And let's add a sphere map after the HDR image. And again, I'm going to grab this with my right click and drop this into the reflection color material. And let's also grab a blend, feed that into the diffuse color or the background color. And I will just set this to black. Now, I really want this to look a lot more shiny. So we can go down to specular and I'm just going to increase the intensity to 16. And I'm also going to come into the reflect node and turn the glancing strength all the way down, the face on strength a little bit higher and reduce the fall off. And maybe we could also add a little bit of a color hue to the specular and the blend. So let's probably do kind of like a bluish color here. And uh, let's maybe add some color to our cook torrents. This is on the front face of the text. Now we could adjust the color using the diffuse inside of the cook torrents. 
or we can grab a background node and feed it into the diffuse color input. And with the background, we can actually change this to gradient and I'm gonna change the gradient type to reflect. And let's just do something kind of like this. Maybe we'll round these numbers. So 0.5 and zero. And I'm gonna do something like almost black for the outer color of the gradient. And then for the center, Let's do something a little bit lighter. Let's actually compare this with the original. Now it's going to look different because there's a lens flare, but we might have to come back and tweak this setting later. Okay, so let's create the sort of abstract background that you see here. Um, so I think we can do that using a, a few fast noise nodes. So I'm going to grab a fast noise and let's just merge everything after our render node on top of the fast noise. And let's view that merge. And then in this fast noise, I'm gonna set this to a gradient with a radial gradient type. And we can grab these and try and create kind of a, uh, maybe a dark blue, whoop, not purple, kind of a darkish blue gradient here. Push this way down there. Actually, let's compare this. Maybe we need to increase the detail. We can also tighten up the gradient like this. Okay, and then let's try and recreate these uh, like abstract shapes. They almost look like an iris or something. Um, so again, I'm gonna grab another fast noise and merge it on top of this one. And uh, in the merge, I'm gonna set the apply mode to screen and let's see what this looks like. So in the fast noise, let's do another radial gradient. And kind of push this into the center there. Now this time I'm going to create kind of like a really tight shape here, something like this. And you can hold control or command and grab these little triangles and create a duplicate. So I want these two to be pretty much black. And then this middle one, let's try and let's twist this around. Let's try and match that color. Maybe try lab for a little bit tighter curve there. I'm going to increase the uh, detail a little bit here too. And then if I unlock the X and Y scale, I can reduce the Y and play around with the X a little bit. Maybe we'll find a better frame. And yeah, I think that's like pretty close. It's also got like these streaks. So what I'm going to do now is grab a fast noise again. And let's look at this over here. And I'm going to unlock the X and Y, reduce the Y all the way and increase this X scale to maybe like 100. That's going to create these uh, stripes. And then after that, we can add a coordinate space. And with the coordinate space, we can set this to polar to rectangle. And now we have these kind of outward streaks and we can feed that into the mask input of our merge. And now we get sort of like this streak effect. I think we need to darken this uh, fast noise. And let's try grabbing another fast noise. And with this one, we're gonna do something kind of similar. So we're gonna stretch this up. Maybe I do want some Y scale. And let's choose discontinuous and inverted. So we get these like bright hot spots along the spines. And then let's actually keyframe the uh, center here. So we're gonna add a keyframe here, go to the very end and just kind of move this up like this. And then let's add a coordinate space after this one as well. And same thing, we're gonna set this to polar to rectangle. And that'll give us kind of this growing out from the center type of look. And so then we'll merge this over our fast noise and set the apply mode to color dodge. And now we get almost like these caustic effects a little bit. Let's uh, let's reduce the blend to make it not so exaggerated. And uh, one other thing I want to do with this kind of abstract shape coming around, I'm going to add an ellipse to the mask input and just create kind of like a really soft vignette. So it kind of fades as it gets closer to the edges like that. So let's take a look at what we have so far. So it's pretty good. It looks a little bit off. Uh, so let's move this over and add a prism blur. And we're gonna increase the blur strength a bit, the aberration distance, as well as the strength. 
and let's also increase the vignette size a bit. So let's kind of move this and let's work on the subtext. So if you look at the original, there's the thicker outer layer and the skinny highlight sandwiched between, and then there's the front text. This is going to be similar to the main text. So let's bring in another text node and uh, let's see, let's connect the camera. I'm going to move the lights over to this side and I'm going to connect the camera so that it creates another merge. I don't want this to be inside of the same merge as everything else because it's going to get affected by these lights. Um, I'm going to treat this kind of as a different scene. So, but I want to use the same camera. And then after the merge, let's go ahead and add a render node. And same thing, I'm going to set this to OpenGL and turn on the lights. And let's merge this after our main text render. Okay, so I'm going to view this merge over here and let's rename this text. And uh, of course we need to type in our text here. And this time I'm going to use uh, this font, which again is also available in the description. We're using the regular variant of it. And then um, let's go ahead and actually, let me go back to the render node and turn off lighting so I can at least see this a bit better just to uh, kind of arrange where this is going to fit in our scene. So let's move it forward a bit and we need to increase the tracking and the scale and play around with the position. All right, that's probably close enough. And now I really wanna work on building kind of the uh, texture of our subtext here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a couple of instance nodes and we're gonna connect these into the merge. Let's go to the main text and we're just going to extrude it. Let's click on the one that's going to be in the back and we're going to de-instance the extrusion, the bevel depth and the bevel width. Let's bring this up just a little bit and then increase the bevel width and then let's decrease the extrusion. So we get kind of this staged sort of thing. And in the middle one, we're going to kind of split the difference. Okay, so I can turn my light back on and I'm gonna add a spotlight to this merge as well. And using the target, we can point this at the text and kind of move it up high. Let's also mess with the cone angle and the decay settings. All right, so then I'm gonna add a couple of replace materials after both of these instances. And we're gonna go grab that same HDR environment and we're just gonna paste this over here and uh, in these replace materials, I'm just gonna add a reflect, oops, a reflect node, feed that into this one. And we're gonna have two separate ones with different settings. So we got two reflect nodes and in our HDR, we're gonna add a sphere map just like before. And this is gonna go into the color material and let's copy the sphere map. Okay, so let's see here. I'm gonna go to this reflect node. This is going into the center skinnier piece here. And we're just going to set this to constant and we can leave this at one and uh, let's add a color corrector after the HDR image on the way over to the reflect node. And we're just going to kind of tint this a little blue, maybe increase the gain. Okay. And then on the reflect node that's going into the back thicker part of the text, uh, let's actually add a blend and this is going to go into the back. Oh, oh, this is actually supposed to go in the color material and then our blend is going to go in the background. So with the blend, we'll just make this a solid black color again. And I'm just gonna copy my color corrector, put another version of it over here, but then instead of using the gain, we're gonna just reduce the gamma. And then let's go to the main text, the center inside text, and just push this kind of towards like a darker blue. And in the sphere maps, we can play around with the rotation to try to get a good location. And I'm not liking these harsh uh, details in those shiny bits. So what we could do is add a blur node after our HDR on the way over to the sphere map. And then we'll just maybe increase this blur a little bit. All right, so now let's create the uh, animation where each letter kind of falls back. Um, so because these are all instants together, we can just control one text node and all of them will follow. So let's go over to the text tab, right click in the text field and click on follower and then hop over to the modifier tab. And let's try a delay of one. And then we're going to go to the shading tab. And uh, if we go to the position, we can control the Z offset. So let's go to somewhere around here, like frame 32. And we're going to add a keyframe and just move this until we sort of pass through it. And then we're going to go forward a couple frames and then just bring this back to zero. 
and in the timing tab, I'm going to set the order to random one by one. And let's see what this looks like. Not bad. And I think we need to add a little rotation. So we'll go under the shading tab and animate some rotation along the Z axis. Okay, so for the echo effect, I'm just going to come down here and make a little more room. And uh, I'm going to take a copy of the center piece. This is what's accounting for the center kind of glossy thin version of the text. So I'm going to copy this instance, paste a new instance out here. And let's also take our camera and create a new merge. And we're just going to grab a render node and merge this over everything else. Okay, let's see if we can make some more room here. And in this version of the text, what I want to do is go to the shading tab and I'm going to de-instance use one material and we're going to check this and then I'm going to de-instance this whole color group and we're just going to zero this out to create a transparent face and all we have is the bevel. If we actually view that text, we can see how that looks. I'm going to grab a background node and feed this into the mask input and in the background, I'm going to change the channel to luminance. And let's feed that back out to the merge node. And in the color, let's just make this kind of a blue. And then after the background, I'm going to add a duplicate node. Let's see, let's do something like this. Okay, and in the duplicate node, let's create five copies with a negative one time offset. So now we have this kind of echoing effect. And under gain, I'm just going to set each of these to 0.5. So they basically become more and more transparent the further they echo. Let's also add a soft glow after our background and maybe do something like this. So now we got sort of the echo effect. Uh, there's a few problems. So I don't want the glowing copy of the text to also appear over everything that we just built. And so because we're using the luminance value as the mask input of our background, what I could do is add a fog 3D node right before the render node and let's set the color all the way to black. And if we tweak the far, then you can see as the text gets further away from the camera, it will essentially disappear into blackness. And again, because we're using the luminance channel on our background node, that effectively means they disappear. And another thing that I'm noticing is when the text is really close, we shouldn't see the glowing version of the text on top. So what I could do is after my duplicate node, I'm just going to add a time speed and set the delay to one. And let's also add a little bit of motion blur in the render node, maybe like eight. And uh, that's probably too um, blurry because it is moving pretty fast. So I'm actually going to decrease the shutter angle. Okay, this is really coming together, I think. Um, there's a few things we need to add. We need to add the kind of outline effect around the main text. We need to add some camera shake, lens flares, particles, that kind of thing. Let's work on the edge around our uh, main text. So again, I'm going to grab an instance and come out here and just paste. And let's grab a merge, plug in our camera into the merge, and then we can use a renderer. We don't need lights and shadows for this one. We're just going to basically use this to create that energy effect. Now with our instance text, I'm going to de-instance the extrusion style and change it back to classic and also the bevel depth and width. And this time we're going to de-instance use one material and same thing here. We're going to make these completely transparent. So we just have this outline and that's definitely way too thick. So let's take that down a bit. And let's go to the shading tab and under bevel material, let's set this to image and we can actually input a separate material just for the bevel. So I'm going to grab a background node here and connect it into the green input like that. And let's change this to gradient and the starting color is going to be completely transparent and the end color will be kind of like a bright blue. We can even tighten up this gradient line a little bit. And now if we adjust the offset, it kind of, traces around the edges of our text. We could even add a transform node and adjust the X position to kind of offset sort of where that outline starts and ends. So let's go to the very beginning of the timeline. And at this point, the outline should be completely filled. 
Oh yeah, and in the transform, we have to set the edges to mirror. And then now let's go ahead and keyframe this offset slider. So we're gonna go to the beginning of our timeline, add a keyframe to about zero. And we're gonna go a little bit after our subtext lands. So about like, maybe about here. And then we're just going to take this all the way out. And in the render node, we have something like that. So here's where we're gonna add some heat distortion, some displace kind of effects. So we're gonna add a soft glow and set the gain pretty high and the size pretty low. And let's copy and paste a new soft glow, this time a little bit weaker and a larger size. And then one more soft glow with an even larger size and an even weaker gain amount. Okay, so with these soft glows, we're gonna go into a displace node with a fast noise hooked into the foreground input. Let's move this over here. Let's take a look at the displace node and we're gonna change this to X and Y and lower the X and Y offset and then maybe just play around with the refraction a little bit. Oh, and then in the fast noise, let's go ahead and increase the detail and also the scale. Let's go to like 35. I'm gonna add a little bit of a seethe rate and also we're going to keyframe the Y position to kind of move down like this. So in the very beginning, I'm gonna add a keyframe for 0.5 about here. Let's just lower this to about 4.5. And it looks like I adjusted the transform. So let's go ahead and adjust this offset of our background so that it completely disappears. Okay, and I'm just gonna copy my fast noise and displace and let's feed the output of our displace into the new displace and now we can kind of change the settings in the second copies to change up the variety. Okay, so I'm going to move both of these sets of displacement and I'm going to take the output and just re-merge it back over the original soft glow. But in the merge node, we're going to lower the blend just a little bit so that we're kind of getting a sharp edge in addition to the sort of energy field that it's creating. And then we're gonna come out of that into a blur node and we're gonna blur just a little bit and let's copy our displace in fast noise once again and add it after our blur. Maybe we'll move this over here and then re-merge this back over everything. And then we're gonna take this whole thing and merge it after our main text 3D. All right, so this is where our lens flare is gonna come in. So this is already in uh, Rec 709. So we're gonna have to convert it back to linear. So let's copy this and let's put it after our main text, but before our subtext. So I'm gonna paste it here and we're gonna merge it right in between. And again, we're gonna have to add a gamut node and change the source space to Rec 709 display. And let's go to the merge node here and just subtract the alpha gain. And we definitely don't want it to start on frame zero. So let's go to the frame where the subtext starts to appear. I'm gonna go back one frame and this is frame 32. So I'm gonna slide my global in and out points to start on 32 and then I'm gonna hit loop so that it really kind of starts there. Okay, and maybe before the gamut, let's add a soft glow here and let's add a keyframe and go forward about here and then just drop it all the way. So that way it sort of blooms whenever it comes on. And let's also add a little bit of color correction after the lens flare. So I'm just gonna take my gamma down and maybe put more of a blue hue on it. And another thing I'm noticing about the subtext is if we compare it to the original, it doesn't actually look like it is visible until it kind of lands in its resting position. So I think an easy way to kind of adjust the on and off control is uh, to go into the merge node here. And after this, we're gonna add a replace material. And this time we're not gonna do anything fancy to it. We're just going to go over to the material tab and lower the opacity all the way. And basically we can just control what this replacement node does using the enable toggle here. So I'm gonna go find the exact frame, like probably here. So let's add a keyframe and go back one frame and enable that. So now the solid version of the text kind of appears after the echo effect. And this is kind of like the uh, Ant-Man effect, but um, on text. Okay, so let's add a little bit of camera shake after everything. So let's go down to the very 
end of our node tree here and we're going to bring in the camera shake, not the first one, but the one beneath it. This one's just got a little bit more control. So we're going to add a keyframe for the motion scale and then go forward one frame and set this to one. And then let's go forward about 10 frames and drop it back to zero. And maybe we can go into the spline editor and sort of smooth out this camera shake so that it kind of tapers off. Maybe we'll make it last a teeny bit longer. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the rest of the light leaks or lens flares. So for these flares, all I did was stick a glass in front of my lens and kind of played around with my LED to get some different effects. And that's what we're going to be using. Let me just copy these and bring them all the way down to the very end. And after our camera shake, I'm going to add a gamut and just set the output space to rec 709. And now we can turn off our viewer let. And let's go ahead and paste these light leaks down here. And we're just going to merge this after everything. And then uh, let's go ahead and add a media out node so that we can actually, you know, render this thing. And in this merge node, let's just set the alpha gain all the way down and maybe set the blend a little bit here. And I'm going to add a transform node and flip this around to the other side. Maybe zoom in a little bit. OK, and let's take our second light leak and merge it after the first one. And maybe we'll flip this vertically and also reduce the alpha gain. And maybe we'll size it up a little, kind of find a good area. And I'm going to add a brightness contrast just to take down the gamma and the saturation a bit here. OK, so let's move this down a little further and I just need to add kind of like a an additional fast noise kind of over everything but underneath the light leaks and with our fast noise, let's do gradient again and take it from full transparency to kind of like a blue color. And I'm going to unlock X and Y and do something kind of like this, maybe increase the detail, add a little bit of seethe rate. And in the merge node, I'm going to set this to screen and then let's go to the beginning and keyframe the blend and drop this And kind of along the same time. I'm also going to add a defocus and in the beginning, this is going to be pretty blurry. So we'll add a keyframe here and then go kind of where the merge. actually let's kind of offset them a little bit. And then I'm going to take this down. I don't want to go all the way down. I actually want this to kind of have a little bit of a blur towards the end and uh, let's come after the lens flares and add a grain node and just kind of dial this down a little. OK, so we're almost done. I'm just going to come up to the effects and under templates, fusion tools. They have this uh, chromatic aberration preset. I'm just going to add this after everything and that just sort of adds a nice subtle little chromatic aberration there. And um, I also forgot to add <laughs> the text that goes in the middle. So I just went ahead and pasted this because it's the same exact process as before. So again, it's a regular text um, with an instance feeding into this whole setup, which creates the outline effect. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just add our logo here and put it up top. All right, so that's pretty much it. I think I'm just going to go through here and kind of tweak some of these settings. Uh, you can play around with the sphere maps to kind of get you know, different reflections. So we could even keyframe the sphere map to kind of get the gloss that goes across. And yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, we did it. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you have any suggestions for future videos like this, definitely leave them down in the comments below. We are always looking for inspiration. So again, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.